Hi, this is a pre-calculus book that you can use to learn mathematics. It's not the easiest book, but it's certainly an interesting book. It's called Pre-Calculus Mathematics. It's by Shanks, Flinor, and Brumfield. Let's take a look at this book. This is an older book. Um, let's see if we can find the copyright. So it's not the newest book. This one's from 1981. So that's been a while since 81. And then here are the topics. So real numbers and coordinates, functions and their graphs, polynomials, exponential and logarithmic functions. Then we have the circular functions, applications of the circular functions, analytic trigonometry, inverse circular functions and trigonometric equations, functions of on the natural numbers, an introduction to calculus, which is kind of cool, and then you have some geometry, the plane, vectors in the plane, space, vectors in space. And over here we have some more topics, angles, lines, and planes, systems of linear equations and matrices, circles, cylinders, and spheres conics, other coordinate systems, and then some parametric stuff. And yeah, you do have an answer section. Let's go there, page 551. So you get answers to the odd number problems, so that's really good. That's what it appears to be, answers to odds. There's quite a few, as you can see. Let's go here, yeah, answer section. Answers are given for most odd number problems and calculator problems. Answers are not included for chapter tests. Okay. Yeah. And the examples in this book, I feel like sometimes they're a little bit harder than some of the examples you might find in more modern books. Um, let me see what edition this is. I have I have another edition of this book. <clears throat> Pretty sure I do. And I think they've made some changes, but you can see here, it's a pretty standard book. It's pretty muted when it comes to like colors. Um, you know, a lot of the newer books have, you know, different colors. There's only like one or two colors here. You have some identities here. So you can use this book for trigonometry uh, or a pre-calculus class. So you can use this for two courses, trig and pre-calc. Um, that's typically how it's done. Inverse circular functions and trigonometric functions. Some cool pictures. And here's the graph of the sine function. They basically restricted the domain to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And when you do that, it, this will pass the horizontal line test. So you'll be able to find an inverse function. The inverse function is the inverse sine. You just basically swap the x and y coordinates and you have um, the inverse function. But the reason you do that is because if you look here, this function is not one-to-one. -one. You won't be able to find an inverse. So you basically have to pick a, a region or an interval uh, where it's one-to-one. -one. So this is the one people usually pick. But in theory, you could pick you could pick other intervals and create a new sine function, and you know, it would be one-to-one. -one. Um, it doesn't have to be just this one. You can define another one if you wanted to. But this is the you know the one people use. Same thing with cosine. You could do the same thing. And tangent, same thing is happening here. Um, it's really good to know the graphs of the trig functions because then you can think about where it's one-to-one -one, and that'll give you the domain that you're restricting it to. So that'll give you the range of the inverse function. And that's very beneficial in trig to know the range of the inverse functions. So if you know the graphs of the trig functions, you can know the range of the inverse function. You can reason it in your mind without having to use like weird memorization techniques. You wanna really understand it and understand why that's the range. Well, it's the range because that's the domain that makes it injective or it makes it one-to-one -one or gives it the possibility of having an inverse function. Anyways, ranting about inverse functions. Um, yeah, this is a pretty cool book. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's really inexpensive too. So if I find any copies, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, so yeah. By the way, if you want to learn math, I do have courses. They're on my website, uh, mathsorcerer.com. I've got tons of courses. Check them out and subscribe if you want to. And that's it. Take care.